Good morning, this is Deborah V. Wilson. I'm in West Yorkshire, Bradford to be specific. It is Wednesday, the 28th of July, 2021, and the time is 10 hundred hours and 34 minutes, BST, British summertime. In my experience of my work as uh, researching UK national security and that's where this started for me. I'm trying to always clarify the terrain in which I operated in as realistically as possible and to contextualize what that experience was for me and how I understand why that experience manifested itself the way it did. So one of the things I have to say to you is my engagement with Britain is very complex. I'm in my 60s. I'm 63 years old. I started traveling to the United Kingdom approximately 40 years ago. And almost immediately, I started doing volunteer work. So my volunteer career in this country spans over 40 years, four decades. In addition to that, at the tail end of the troubles, I met someone and moved to Dundalk, and we were engaged. That someone is a, a person the British government and the Irish government believed to have been a member of the IRA. He denied that he was. So I have a particular set of realities about me that I, I want to make clear that if you do make a decision to engage in this activism in this country, or one of the four nations that make up the United Kingdom, you very well may not have. In, in addition to that, I'm going to post a tweet, I'm going to include a tweet. Um, the security service, along with the Garda, the Irish police, and the IRA and another paramilitary group uh, at the time uh, participated, were all a part of saving my life in 1998. So, uh, and then MI5 had to, I was in Dundalk, which is in Ireland, and I uh, wanted to, uh, I left the country, but I wanted to travel back through London. The Irish and the British governments thought it was best if I traveled from Ireland to the U.S., uh, to some place in the U.S., and then on to Chicago, which is where I was born. But London is my touchstone. And I had not done anything wrong. No one had accused me of doing anything wrong. In addition, I was fleeing. And it was the security service that uh, gave the okay for me to travel through uh, England, Heathrow Airport, to England from Dublin to go on to the U.S. and the conditions of that, which was I couldn't speak to anyone other than air airport personnel about my travels, something specifically related to my travels. So there, I have baggage. I have baggage in things attached to my identity in terms of my engagement with the United Kingdom around my activism uh, that looks at national security, which I think many people will not. So now that I've uh, disclosed my particulars, my specifics, let me go back and, and talk a little bit more about this particular, my particular, under, my understanding of this particular type of activism. Many people think that feminism is women burning their bras. Really, they do. In 2021, people believe that. But in fact, feminism is an ideology that manifests itself through a prism of the reality in which it emerges. And so how feminism is defined is specific to the women, I'm going to say women, women who define it, when they are defining it, and where they're defining it. 
Okay. So to try to get uh, practitioners to understand that questioning national security is part of your feminism might be a challenge for you. But nevertheless, stay resolute. One of the things that is also interesting about this is that if you are good at questioning the national security model, efficient at it, thorough at it, again, good, you're going to bump into practitioners. And my opinion about that, as long as they ascertain who you are ethically and within the bounds of your legal rights to engage in said activism, and so you want to make sure you have those legal rights in that country, your country, or the country you're operating in, I don't have a problem with that. The way in which I understood my activism and the word I used about the type of activism I was involved in, it wasn't a civilian audit through a feminist lens of the way in which the state understood national security. So the practitioners have to be quite agile and adapt. And so they need to ascertain that we are being the country no harm. We are who we say we are. Uh, authentically, autonomously acting as civilians. They need to leave us as auton autonomously acting civilians. But they also need to where you have rights in the country, you have rights to engage in such a way, even as a foreigner, which I was acting as a foreigner in the United Kingdom when I was doing that research, that you, they have to respect your rights. But also the interesting thing is those same practitioners become part of the model to make sure you are safe and able to engage in your lawful right to ask the state how are you keeping us safe and why are you choosing this way in which to keep us safe. So I think it can be fascinating. I, I loved it and continue to love it. It is the basis of the, uh, my findings are the basis for my research in higher education. So I, I, I can't say enough about it enjoying it, the work, and I find it intellectually invigorating, and I also find it a way to give service, and that's very important to my sense of self, that I'm giving service. So hence, when I came here as a tourist, I was doing volunteer work, right? And I've never stopped doing something, writing papers and submitting them to home office or any other government agency, the applicable government agency in this country. And that's something you can do here as well. And I imagine in other countries that ability also exists. So do your homework before you decide to do this type of research and be prepared for the reality of it. If you start asking a nation how and why you're doing national security the way in which you are. Most likely, the chances are that nation's going to turn around and ask, yeah, and who are you? So you want to make sure you have your ducks in a row. Uh, for me, because again, the uh, my prior... Because of Dundalk, uh, and this was the second time I had popped up on the security services radar. And it was in an un unusual way, first of all. Uh, I, I was, I'm an American, and the places in space, the particular place in space in which I popped up initially, I think for many people was unexpected for a black American woman. So there is that. So one of the questions I was asked was uh, when I was interviewed, and I was interviewed numerous times by counterterrorism police out of the Metropolitan Police, 
and I will post information about them again. Uh, so I don't want to ever give you the impression that I just sort of sontes, you know, just just sashayed into <laughs> that's a, I like that word. It's an old word. It, it sashayed into the UK one day and said, "Oh, hey, I want to look at the way in which counterterrorism police and MI5 do their jobs." I didn't. In fact, it was my experiences in Dundalk and my feminism and my sense of the need to do service that came together that led me to do my activism. But practitioners, getting a practitioner to understand that. So part of that process for me was validating that I was a, a civilian, that I did not work for a U.S. government agency, that I was autonomous, 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 autonomously acting, and also self-funded. So uh, there was nothing uh, particularly arduous for me. I'm all about documenting, documenting, documenting. My uh, career in America, my business career in America, was accounting and HR, human resources, and, and with under the umbrella of, a, of a work as an accountant and uh, human resources, I did a plethora of things that always included uh, a fair bit of documentation. So have your ducks in a row. Let your ethics and your love of the subject matter be your guide. Be reasonable, be rational, be practical, and know that if you didn't know anybody in the uh, national security model before, you start asking enough questions about how they do what they do, you're probably going to end up getting <clears throat> clearing throat acquainted with them. That's like British speech. Yeah. So, uh, in, in my case, uh, they kept their boundaries, stepped, uh, uh, kept, didn't step beyond the boundaries. I was always and continue to be an autonomously acting and self-directed activist that is seeking to turn that now into my academic studies. So I hope this podcast made sense. This is Deborah B. Wilson. I'm in Bradford, and thank you for listening. I never say this, but I guess I should. Don't forget to like and comment. Thank you.